Hello and welcome to this screencast, creating a digital signature workflow with SharePoint Designer. I'm Larry Kluger, your host today, and we're going to get started right away. Here's an overview of the workflow that we're going to do. We're going to create an approval needed document library, and when a file, either a PDF, a Word, or Excel is added to that library, and the approver field, which will be one of the a metadata that we'll create, is set, then the workflow will start automatically. The approver is a person and he or she will be assigned a task to view and sign the document using cosign. And then if the approver signed the document, we'll move it to the approved document library. This is step three. Otherwise, we'll move the document to the approval denied library. So let's get started. I'm going to first demonstrate how the workflow works and then we'll look under the covers to see how I built it. I can have my choice here of signing Excel documents, PDF files, and Word documents. So let's start by signing a PDF file. I'm in the approval needed document library. You can also see that I have my approved document library, approval denied, and I've also created short uh, links on the left hand navigation for both the tasks and workflow history libraries. And we're going to use all of those. So within approval needed, let's add the new file. And I'm going to add the name of the approver. This uses a pick list from SharePoint for the names of people. And I'll make myself the approver in this case. And now the workflow is being automatically started and I'm the submitter. I don't have to do anything else. I can go about my business. Now changing hats, as I mentioned, I'm set myself as the approver for this workflow. So if I go to my tasks, we can see that the system has given the task to me. And it's not started yet, I click on the task. This brings up the preview screen produced by Cosign Connector for SharePoint Server. We can preview the document and look, look at it in the different pages. And now we'll select which field to sign. Uh, in this case, we're gonna create a new signature uh, field and I can position that as you see here. And now I'll sign it. I get the signing ceremony window. I have a choice of a number of different fields I can fill in. I authenticate myself and start the signing process. The document has been signed now and now I'll complete my workflow here by clicking Approve. That's the end of that task. We go to our task list. Here's the request. Again, the document is previewed. In this case, it's a Word document. And again, I sign. This time, however, to sign a Word document or an Excel document, the signature line needs to be inserted as part of the document itself. This is what's coming from Word. So I can choose either of two available fields in, for this document. I'll sign as the manager. And the document again has been signed. I complete my workflow by clicking approve. Next, we're going to deny a signing request and we'll see what happens there as well. So let's look at the task. And this time I will reject the signing request. I can give a reason. And 
and that's done as well. So let's look at what the system does with the files. If we go to the approved library, we can see the two files that we approved. Let's look at them and see how they look on the local system. If I simply click on the name of the PDF, it will open in PDF Reader, and we can see that it's been signed. We can see that the Adobe Reader has uh, verified the signatures. If we double click, we can see that the signature is valid and everything is good. In the same way, if we download a copy of the signed Word document, we see the document in Word. The signature has been verified, and Word does not need Cosign or any other plugins to, to view and verify digital signatures. If we double click on the signature, we again get the information that the uh, signature is valid, that the document has not been changed since it was signed. So now if we go back to our approval denied library, we can see the document that was not approved and the reason please replan for next quarter and also who denied the signing request and who requested it. Lastly, if we look at workflow history, we can see first off that the time zone on this machine is not set quite correctly. And also this is where the first request was started, the workflow started, and then it was signed. And then the task was moved to the approval uh, workflow was complete. It was moved to the approved uh, library and uh, that's the end of that. And now the workflow is started uh, again, this time for the Word document and that worked. And then finally the last one, in this case the outcome of the signing request was a rejection and in this case it was moved to approval denied. Very good. So now let's look under the covers a little bit and see how these different systems are made. Let's first look at the cosine settings for the approval needed library. And in particular, we are enabling the user to create new signature fields and we're enabling them to set different settings for each time they sign. And at the bottom here, we can set what are the predefined approvals uh, reasons. Uh, so approved and confirmed are our two reasons. There's another important setting needed for the approval needed library. I want to show you that. So we go here to library settings. And under advanced setting, the first part is that we allow management of content types. We change that to yes from its default. And now under content types for document, what's important is that there are a couple of fields that I've added and we want them to be in the hidden status. And the, they are just used as temporary placeholders for when we're moving documents. That's requester, denied by, and denial reason. The other uh, fields I want to point out is that I've added the approver field, which is simply a person or group, and it's a required field. The signature fields that you're seeing here come automatically from when uh, Cosign Connector is installed and they, in fact, are not being used within this library. They are being used within the approval approved library. Let's go to the approved library now and see some of its settings. And I have not added any extra columns or anything like that. Uh, everything here is uh, from from when I simply created the library. And again, the meta fields of for signing came from the SharePoint connector I, uh, for Cosign. I didn't have to add them explicitly. For approval denied, I added some additional columns. Uh, 
denied by, denial reason, and requester. Okay, so let's look at the workflow now. We move over to SharePoint Designer. Here's our view of the site within SharePoint Designer. And I'm going to click on Workflows, and then we're going to look at how I created this workflow, which is named Get Signed Approval. First off, under Start Options, we can see that the workflow will start automatically when an item is created. And also, I've set the task list and history list to be their standard values. Let's edit the workflow. And we, uh, the, work, the entire workflow is quite short, as you can see. I'm going to start the workflow by saying, uh, a logging command. Uh, I use that for debugging. It's very useful. We can see it from the history via, uh, the history library when we are trying to figure out what is going on. And I'm just giving this message that the workflow has started. Next, I created a step which I renamed to be called send cosine signature task. And I created the signature task. It's very easy to do that. Let's uh, show how to add one. I put the cursor where I want it to be, and then I say either sign with cosine, auto sign, or verify. And then I would name the task. This is the person who will be performing the task, and then the action has different outcomes. So let's see how I, how I made use of this. First, we name the task, and the name of the task, remember, is going to be shown to the person who's going to be asked to do the task. So you want something that's very much to the point. For example, rather than giving the document name first, I first am showing the name of the person who created the request, the current item created by, request approval for, and then the name of the document that's going to be signed. Next, we choose who the task will be assigned to, and this is the person who's being asked to sign the document or reject it. I've set that to current item and the approver. And finally, the task outputs to uh, two different fields, signature outcome and, signature and signer comments, and we're going to use that in just a moment. I log, I log the fact that the sign task is complete. And now we look to see here with an if statement, if the data source is workflow variables and parameters, and the field from the source is signature outcome. So I say, okay. And if it equals simply signed, and that's simply the word signed, then that tells us that the file's been signed. So I create a new step. And I copy the current the item, the current item into the approved library. And then I log the fact that I did that. And then I delete the item from the current item library. Otherwise, the approval was denied. So I log the fact that the approval was denied. I'm moving the item name was rejected by the current item approver. And I move that to the approval denied library. So this is logging what I'm going to do. Let's see how I do it. First, I set fields within the current item. So I set the denial reason to be a from a workflow variable, the actual variable signer comments. And I return that as a string. Then I set who denied the signing request. And that's the current item, the approver. And also who requested it, and that's the, the person who created the current item. Then I copy it from current item to the approval denied library. And finally, I delete current item. The reason why we're saving these different, these different values as part of the metadata for current item, even though they're not needed there, is to make it easy to copy everything over to approval denied and then delete it from current item. Then I uh, stop the workflow and log the fact that it's done. So that's all there is to it for creating a quick workflow that uh, creates a signing task for somebody, and then he or she is asked to sign or reject the document. Thanks very much for your time.